Hello and welcome to my video. Um, today I'm going to paint a towering cloudscape on this. Uh, this is a piece of plywood, five millimetres thick, which is about an eighth of an inch thick. Three coats of gesso. The board is called Okumi. It's an African mahogany and it is that sort of colour. It's got a mark on there already. It's that sort of colour. There's a right side, right side and a wrong side. This is the wrong side to paint on because there's a seam down there. Uh, the correct side is the side that doesn't have the seam and uh, that is it. But of course it's under paint now. So uh, off we go. See you in a minute. Right, I thought I'd show you my palette. Uh, I've got a little camera pointing at this. Just, just temporary. I'm not going to run this through the entire video because it makes the video too big. And I live in a place where um, the internet seems to be run on cheese. Um, cheese and frogs, I think. Cheese and frogs legs. So it's not very fast. So uh, I'll keep this really down to the minimum. Uh, smallish picture. But anyway, look, two, two paper palettes. Uh, I may end up mixing on this surface here, which is a piece of plate glass. It's quite mixed, which makes a good palette and it's quite easy to clean. But clean them soon because uh, um, paint sticks to glass very well, very quickly. Anyway, these are the colours that I'll probably use today. Uh, royal blue, Payne's grey, um, Japanese red, maybe a little hint of that. Touch of uh, cadmium yellow, don't know yet. It just happens to be on the palette from something I did recently. Um, a whole load more Payne's grey up there. But, uh, what else we got? Um, yeah, yellow ochre, red ochre, usual stuff. Um, there's just little bits of this that work. Some of it's dried off, I think. Um, that bit's dried off, but so I know some of it's wet, so I won't stick my finger in it. Anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing. Once, I, um, once I've mucked these two palettes up completely, I'll either get new pages or just, as I said, just work on the glass here. And uh, off we go. Now, uh, as I showed you at the beginning, this picture here, which I'll put on the screen, this is one I did um, quite a few years ago, probably... I think about 2018, somewhere around there, maybe even maybe even older. And it's uh, it's not wonderful, but uh, I, I want to make it slightly more wonderful. You're only seeing the bottom of the thing at the moment because I'm going to do the landscape first, then I'm going to lay into the clouds um, because I want the mix between the sky and the land to be smooth. So um, let's get rid of this palette camera because I think most, most people know how to... Um, mixed paint. Uh, I'm using linseed oil. Okay, so uh, what I'm doing, I'm mixing up um, a little bit of sap green and a red ochre, the usual stuff. You, uh, there, there's the uh, picture on the screen for you to gaze upon for a minute while I'm uh, mixing up these colours. Uh, I'm just going to, the, the landscape part is actually almost nothing, it's dead simple. Um, I don't know whether to bring it up a little higher in this one. In in the one that you're looking at now, as you can see, the um, the landscape is, it's not the rule of thirds, let's put it that way. It's more like the rule of, uh, in fact, two, three, four, yeah, the rule of fifths. That's a tricky one to say, fifths. So uh, I'll sort of bring it up just a, a tad more, I think prob probably to around that point. So all I'm going to do is just it's very, very simple, no fuss landscape with a bunch of trees in the middle. And I think I might even leave it that small. I don't, I don't really want to go any bigger than that. This, this line here, of course, is totally temporary. Um, it's just something to get on the board until I get my cloud sorted out. In fact, I'm going to have another bunch of trees just there because I want to. That's all it is. Very simple. There may be some single standing trees. In the, in the original there were. There's like a dark line of them in the foreground, but I'm not bothered too much about that because the thing is, and I think most people are here for the clouds. So uh, when I get my wits together, 
I'm going to find a brush which I can use to start the clouds off because I've used a dirty, well, they call it a dirty brush. It's not really a dirty brush. It's um, a brush that's just got paint on it. So I want another one which can be... That one will do. This one, they're all about the right sort, uh, same sort of size. This is seven centimetres wide. Seven centres for uh, America land is um, just under three inches. In fact, it's uh, as near as damn it, two and three quarter inches. And um, the way that I will introduce the land to the sky is to put in a colour. Now, I could put in white, which of course is a colour. People might want to argue that. Feel free to, if you want. Um, or you can put in something like royal blue, which is what I'm going to do, mixed in with a bit of white. And um, all it is, think of it this way, it's just, it's just a medium to combine the sky and the land together. What you don't want, I do sound bossy, I know. What you don't want is um, a crisp hard line between the sky and the land, particularly if you're painting uh, tonalism, the tonalism's tonalist style. You need a blending between the two. So here we go. I'm going to state the obvious. I've got blue and white on here. As I start to put the paint on, it starts to become interesting. And you need to learn how to spot things like this. You see how interesting... Now, I use the word interesting. OK, maybe I'm, maybe I'm easily interested. But I find that the way these tones react to, to one another actually creates interest in the picture without doing anything else there's a sort of little landscape starting to appear in the corner there because of the different tones in those blues now I don't, I'm not bothered by them at the moment and anything that I, I do see now I will commit to memory but then move on because I know I have to get this colour right the way across some people will say why don't you put this blue and white on first well, that, I think, would be a little bit boring. Now, it may not be boring for you, but it'd be boring for me. Because it's just... It's, I don't know. Maybe it's just because it's what everyone else would do. I don't want to do it. So, off we go. Doing my own thing. Sometimes, which doesn't work. But even if it doesn't work, it produces something that I learn from. So... We'll continue doing it that way. Okay, so now we've got more paint with less oil. So it's going to be a stronger blue there, which is fine. Uh, I'll find a use for that. There we go. So there, there is the bottom of the sky over these trees, which again are going to change shape again. Not, not yet, though, because I'm not quite ready for that. Um, I'm just noticing on my palette that the um, the royal blue is a lot drier than I expected. So I'm sort of fighting it a bit. And I, I don't like to waste paint, but uh, I think in this case I'm going to have to. Otherwise it's going to be like, um, well, it'll be too lumpy. And I don't want it too lumpy. Okay, so we'll just get a bit more royal blue. Um... For those of you who missed it at the beginning, Royal, Royal Blue is um, a, a sort of pale sky blue colour. It's like sky in a tube. It's ready-made sky and um, absolutely wonderful colour. Probably a bit blurred there, but anyway, there it is. And uh, I'm going to start putting this paint on the glass because I need to sort of uh, make quite a lot of it. And I'm running out of paper pallets, funnily enough. I need to go to the shop. 
when I say the shop, I mean the Cultura shop. These Cultura shops are in France. I don't think they're over all of France, and they do have a website, so you can go and have a look. If you can, if you can get through the website, which is in French, um, you can order stuff from them. Uh, or uh, if you can't uh, get any of the colours uh, from France, you can always go to uh, Jackson's of London. Uh, they have a website, just Jackson's of London, .co.uk or .com, I'm not sure. And uh, they also do uh, deliveries. So, uh, but you know, you can you can probably find stuff locally. I hope so anyway. Okay, so here now, a little bit more, a little bit more royal blue going in there. I've got some sort of a, a couple of little accidents. You know, that pale bit there, that's a, that's a bit of an accident. I didn't really, uh, I didn't plan that, but it looks okay, so I might leave it. The trick is, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're going to be painting, if, I, I tell you this stuff because I'm teaching, right? Sometimes you wouldn't, uh, you don't have to tell everyone that something was an accident. If people like it, let them, uh, let them believe what they want. And if they think it's a wonderful bit of painting, don't, don't ruin their day. You don't have to um, give all your secrets away. In fact, the best thing to do is to keep watching my videos, because uh, I don't mind giving away secrets, because it, it, it see, funnily enough, the secrets of painting, if there are any, what are, what's the secret of painting? I mean, if you think about it, it's just, all I'm doing is imparting a bit of knowledge. Uh, it doesn't mean to say that you'll instantly become a, a great painter. Um, you, I hope you'll become a competent painter and, and happy in what you're doing, but uh, it all does take a certain amount of practice. So don't expect too much too quickly. I just mixed up um, some Japanese red with royal blue and I've got this colour. I'm just going to turn the camera so that it will focus close up, I hope. There we are. That colour, which is a, a sort of nondescript, slightly, uh, I don't know what you call it, but it, that's what it looks like. Anyway, let's go back to the focus on the picture. I hope it's focusing on the picture. Are you focusing? Do you know, there are times when I think it's time I got a new pair of glasses. Anyway, I think it's okay. So this colour, I'm going to introduce to that colour. Now, because it's on the palette knife, doesn't mean to say I'm going to use the palette knife because I'm not quite ready for that yet. That'll be coming into it later. So Japanese red mixed with a um, tiny amount of white, almost nothing, and um, uh, royal blue. And it will lighten as I put it on there because it's going to mix with the, uh, the blue that's already there. But what I'm after is I'm starting to build up the base of some clouds where it's slightly dark. So let's just go for it. A little bit there. Uh, and don't, don't, I know you know this, <laughs> don't follow the landscape. The landscape and the sky do their own thing. In fact, I'm going to I have to pull some more paint out of some tubes here because it looks like a lot of the colours that I thought were still wet aren't. It's not too bad, but I think I might need a bit more. So a little bit of Payne's Grey. And in a moment, when I'm happy with where the sky meets the land, I'll start to structure the land a little bit more. I can either do it now uh, or I can do it later. It doesn't really matter. This isn't going to dry for, uh, well, to the point where I can't paint, it, it'll be a few days. It'll get too sticky. And you don't want to put absolutely new paint on very sticky paint because 
they will be drying at different rates and uh, you'll get a clash which makes cracks and um, some people like that funnily enough they like the crack to look and in fact if you are a, a copyist which is a, of course a very polite way of saying a forger um, they often do that to get uh, the sort of cracked old effect. In fact, you can buy varnish that does that. Not that I'm trying to encourage you to be a forger, of course. Okay, so there's some nice dark bits down the bottom. And this is where we start to sort of we get the um, crazy arm flick and the wrist flick because you want clouds to have a bit of life in them, you've got to paint them with a bit of life. So, adding more and more Payne's Grey here, just to get some structure in the clouds. So let's see, now I'm going to have to move the camera in a minute, so I know that I can go to that point. Okay, when I get to there, I'll shift the camera so you don't miss too much. So what I'm doing is getting some tones on there. Time to move the camera. Right. Now you can't see right at the top of the picture yet uh, because I want to zoom. I want to keep reasonably uh, close to it so that you don't miss too much. But that's the problem with um, videoing something that is portrait. You can only do it in stages, otherwise it becomes just a sort of slither up the middle of your screen. So I now know I'm going to put a mark on here, because I know I've done this in a few videos before, where I've um, been painting away, thinking that everybody can see what I'm doing. And guess what? You can't. So uh, I'll, make, I'll make a concerted effort to keep you in the frame, so to speak. So again, this is purely, um, I don't know why that's rattling so much. Do you know, this is one of the bones of my life, this rattling easel. It's an extremely good easel. Um, one which I'd, I bought in America about nine years ago. And I dragged it across the planet, uh, all the way here to France. And it's, it is a wonderful easel. It's a, you know, it's a French box sketching easel type thing. I'm just going to stuff some paper behind the back. To um, try and get it so that it doesn't rattle. That should do it. It's better. Okay. So I'm going to carry on just putting this grey on. Um, there's no um, there's no real pattern to what I'm doing. It's like a bit of a sort of, uh, I suppose, a bit of a slant that way. But, you know, that's the nature of the, the painting. It's got this, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's got it anyway. Right, so that's grey. And uh, I'm going to have to move palette number two out of the way because I need access to white and also access to more royal blue so there's a nice big lump of white you have to trust me on that I just looked at the um, file size of the uh, little bit of shot of my palette and that's like 400 megabytes so Perhaps you can understand why I don't particularly want to um, have that running all the way through the video because it all adds up and um, it means it'll take me even longer to upload the video. So uh, I, need, I need some um, royal blue up here. So I've got a royal blue brush. It would be good, um, talking of file sizes and the amount of time it takes to upload, which can be uh, 24 hours here to get a, a video, an hour long video, 24 hours. I mean, that's ridiculous because it uh, 
clogs up the computer. It means that um, my wife is, uh, she's at the other end of the house. She makes videos uh, on meditation and yoga and things like that. And um, if I'm uploading a, a giant video, it can upset her, um, her bandwidth, I guess. Okay, so there we are, royal blue. Pretty well straight from the tube, very, very thin. I'm not putting on a ton of paint and it's quite strong because it will have white added. So I don't want to, I don't want it to be too pale at the beginning. I want it to have a little bit of, a um, little bit of oomph so that I can down the amount of oomph later and to the amount that I want. So it means that I'm in control of what, what, what it ends up as. And, uh, you know, imagine, let me try and explain that a bit better. Imagine if I put this blue on here with a whole load of white in it uh, and then started adding white to have some interesting contrasty clouds, um, I'd be fighting. I'd be fighting something that's probably a bit too pale. I wouldn't be able to get any interest in it. So uh, it's better if I keep that colour strong, at least at the moment, anyway, because it's it's easier to um, it's easier to lighten down. And of course, in oil paint, you start dark, head towards the light. Okay, time to move the camera in a minute. So these are the, this is this royal blue. Pushing it up against the, um, the grey over there. Just, just sorting this brush out. So where the, where the greys are, you see, now I quite like this. Let's pull them together. Like so, Let's push one into the other. Make it interesting. Okay. It'll have a, a whole load more drama in it later. Right, so I'm just going to show you the top, which is not, um, as I say, it's nothing to write home about. It's just um, another couple of inches of what you can see there. So tilt the camera up a little bit more. There we go. Hopefully that's in focus. I live in fear of out of focus cameras. Oh, and uh, as I usually do, uh, I probably didn't mention it at the beginning, but anyway, this is refined linseed oil that I'm using here. And um, as you can hear, it's a childproof top, so I can't undo it. Oh, there we go. Obviously, I'm still slightly childish. No, no, what's the word? You don't want to be childish, you want to be childlike. Childlike I think is a compliment. Childish is not necessarily a compliment. Anyway, um, so yeah, a bit more, bit more blue near the top. Just putting in a little tiny bit of linseed oil uh, because I want, it, I want it, as I usually say, mobile but not drippy. Um, and I don't want tons and tons of thick paint because it's just too much of a battle to actually paint on very thick paint. So um, let me think, has anything interesting been happening in in Stuart land. Well, no, not really. I, I sat, <laughs> sorry, this just struck me as funny. I, I um, on New Year's Eve, I sat here in my office. Um, I was working on a book that I designed 
and um, suddenly I noticed that it was heading towards midnight. Okay, quick look at that. Yep, that's good. Uh, it was heading towards midnight, and I thought, oh, let's watch the um, clock on my computer flick over to a new year. And I, I remember I did this last year as well. And as it went from 22 to 23, the first thing that went through my mind was, made it. Uh, so, to some people that might sound a bit depressing, but to me, it actually, uh, I thought, well, yeah, that's okay. I made it. Well, I've made it another year. Not all of it, of course. Which I really hope to do, but we'll see how it goes. Right, so we've got blues and stuff. I've got a, I've got a lump of um, paint. Well, I've got an area where there's not a lot of paint there. I might leave that because uh, I might find a use for it. So at the moment, we've got all this really nice, juicy blue. Which is what I call it. It's a juicy colour. Doing, this, doing the sky in two stages. Now, normally, I would put down this blue. Then I would use a palette knife to put white on it. And then I would get a, a dry brush, either a big or small one, doesn't matter. And um, I would uh, start to sort of soft brush it, you know, to get my cloud effect. This one's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to, because I know there are people who maybe don't want to use the palette knife. Maybe they think, oh, that's really tricky, which it isn't. I mean, you have to, you've got to believe it, I'm sorry, but... Uh, um, you have to convince yourself it isn't actually that difficult. Uh, if you just get on with it and do it a few times, it starts to get easier. Same with anything, really. Um, probably exactly the same with uh, brain surgery. You know, do it once, maybe rubbish, but keep doing it. Work at it. So, uh, where are we going to go with this now? OK, I want the brush with um, white on it. So which one shall we use? It doesn't have to be a particularly good brush, and I do have a lot of brushes that aren't particularly good at the moment. I seem to have bought a batch of these things that really are having trouble keeping their bristles. They're usually quite good, but that's, a, that's not so bad now. Right, so um, now, white clouds. Here's a quick glimpse. I'll keep out of the way. Quick glimpse of the picture I'm sort of... I'm not copying it, it's just... Uh, it's just to give you an idea of the type of sky, or type of painting, really. So uh, let's just get in there with some white. This is white straight from the tube on a, an otherwise dry brush. And um, let me just make sure you can see the maximum amount of that without me zooming back too far. Let me go down a little bit because... There we go. Now, funnily enough, as it stands, that some people would say, oh, well, that's it, that's my painting. Yeah. Not me. I'm, I'm never quite that satisfied that quickly. So let's see what we're going to do. Let's have a little bit of, a little bit of that. You see? Contrast. This is the thing that gets people. Contrast uh, is different from garish. You don't want to make your painting garish. You want it classy. Maybe that's the word. How to paint classy pictures. Let's have a little bit of something there. Okay, see? Not difficult. Wiggle, waggle, wiggle, waggle. That's all it is. It's just waggling, wiggling and waggling. So I'm going to do with my palette knife. Wiggling and waggling. Maybe that's the trick. So what are we thinking of? Towering clouds. If they're going to be towering clouds, they're going to be exciting. They can't just be like a lump. They have to have life and spontaneity which means don't stay in one spot too long 
don't overwork the paint. Put the paint down. This is this light area. <laughs> stating your, I'm so good at stating the obvious. I think that drives people close to me bonkers sometimes. Okay, um, that means that when I put white on this bit, it will stay even whiter because it hasn't got a lot of paint to mix with. So that could be quite interesting at the moment. But you know me, I change my mind on a whim. Let's see what else we can do to make this interesting. Let's have a little bit in there. And you may notice that when I do it, it's like, as I, I don't know how to explain it, but as I approach the painting, I let my, I, <laughs> I let my arm and my hand go out a little bit out of control because painting is not necessarily about controlling paint. It's about not controlling the paint. Think outside the box. So in other words, if I put a, if I carefully place some white on this painting, there's a, there's a danger that it could look boring and static and have no movement. Whereas if I do something like this, even flicking off the bristles that are really ticking me off at the moment, getting a bristle off can actually make the painting look interesting. Okay, do they look like clouds in motion? You know, one of the things, I just dropped a piece of paper on the floor. One of the things I really don't like about getting older is I've got to the point now when I drop something, I look at it and I assess whether it's even worth picking it up. Sometimes it isn't. Not worth the anguish. In fact, one trick is to leave the thing on the floor until you find yourself in a suitable position to kick it somewhere where you can get it. Or encourage the cat to play with it until it puts it in a place where you can get to it. Okay, so these clouds are starting to look... Now, where well, they're starting to look. Um, let's see what we can do when we do something like this. In other words, very, very light touches, generally all over the place. I'm sort of getting happy down there to the point where uh, I will start to bring the clouds and the land together. But the, all this blue that I left up here, let me show you what my plan was for that. Now the reason, the reason I want to show you the, up the top there, it's quite, well, it's quite interesting, I'm just looking in the camera and it all looks quite small, but this, this bit of blue here, you look at the width of my hand on it, it's actually a fair size. And um, my, my hand width is, um, he said, going to look for a tape measure, not, not unbelievably big. Um, how, is, how wide is my hand? Okay, my, the width of my span from my thumb to my little finger is actually nine inches. So you can see that's a fair size area there. So to me, to make that interesting, what I'm doing is getting a little bit of white on the brush. I'm not. I'm mixing it with a tiny bit of blue, not much. Just. A, I mean, just a hint. And the idea is now that I can do some other clouds, some wispy bits up here. And uh, bear in mind, I'm going over this all again in a minute with uh, a dry brush. And all I'm doing is just sort of making a few wisps. Like so. No, there's no um, set pattern. They're just sort of there because, you know, one of my favourite sayings is that's what clouds do. They don't organise themselves into your painting. So they've got to go off the edge and they've got to look a little bit out of control. So there we are, some out of control wispy bits. Right, so um, now I want a dry brush. Biggish. A biggish dry brush. This is biggish. This is one uh, 100 millimeters or 10 centimeters, and that in inches 
is um, four, four inches. Four inches as near as heck. So what am I going to do with this? Well, you know already. I'm going to do the skimmy thing. Okay, just before I start, the bit of the brush that comes in contact with the painting is this and this, not the tip. It's like a, a very gentle landing of an aeroplane off. So, in other words, I don't go bang, move and off. I come into land like a plane, like that. So I'm gently skimming the, the uh, paint surface. I don't want to move too much paint around, I just want to blur slightly. When I've done that, I'll go over it with a palette knife, add a bit more cloud, and uh, see what we can do with that. Okay, so you barely see the board move. Of course, having said that, my wobbly easel will make it wobble from here to Paris. There we go. So I'm turning it each time like that. Now I am leaving a few bristles on there because quite frankly I can't be bothered and I don't think they even show up on the video. There may be one or two. I'll get them off later anyway. There's one there actually, just here. In fact, I find them so irritating. I think maybe I will have to get it off. And preferably not kick the eagle again. So, quick wipe. As you can see, hardly any paint showing up on there. And there's the offending hair. Okay, so it's a quick pull across the bottom there. This this sky will have other other colours added to it. Uh, maybe in this setting. Don't know. Let's just lean that forward a bit more so you can see the bottom edge. Now I, I might add colour in this um, this sitting, but well, in this video, which may mean that I will stop and come back to it in a few days. But I prefer not to, and I'm going to try and talk myself out of doing that. So there we are. Some really nice. Simple cloud. Didn't take long, did it? So keep it in your head. Okay. The old guy on the video did it. Therefore, you can do it. Now, I'm quite pleased with that. And I know someone's going to see something in the sky. What's this pareidolia thing? Uh, I can already see something. I can see some kind of giant head thing. There's an eye there. There's a nostril. It's obviously a couple of ears. So I can either leave it as the giant whatever it is in the sky or I can push it around a bit until it stops looking like that. But uh, I won't at the moment because it'll change quite quickly anyway, I expect. Now then. Okay, so I'm reasonably pleased with the bottom edge. Of the, uh, of the clouds. So I think what I'm going to do is a bit of work on the landscape and then I'll go back to the sky in a moment. Because I know I know most people are here for the sky but uh, I'm sure you'd like to know how to combine your sky with the landscape. Unless of course you intend to just paint skies with no landscape whatsoever. which um, I have done that in the past and uh, people tend to quite like them, funny enough. So, so I'm going to zoom in on the, on the um, land. Okay, so now, as you can see, um, it's a very green landscape. I mean, grass is green, we know that. But um, sometimes in paintings, I find that uh, people overdo the greenness. Uh, it's grass, to really look authentic, has to contain brown and red. And uh, that's why I use uh, red ochre, which I'm trying to find now. As I, oh, here we are. Right. Okay. Red ochre, sometimes called, or probably in America, transparent oxide red. Lots of tonalists use this. And um, you've got to ask yourself, why are they using it? They must know something. 
so maybe it's a good idea to get it and uh, uh, use it. You can, uh, of course, just add something like cadmium red if you want. Um, but this, I don't know, maybe it's because this is a sort of mud colour, maybe that's why it works. If you add cadmium red to sap green, you'll just make the green very dark. Um, uh, and sort of not quite so interesting. Just my opinion. And what do I know? Okay, now then. Let's see. Now this is the sort of landscape that uh, is where I live, which is why it keeps popping up in my paintings. Um, and I like it. I quite like this landscape. Although recently we were in um, the Pyrenees. And I have to say, if you've never seen the Pyrenees, Google it. Pyrenees. I'll put the spelling on the screen now, uh, just so you can take a quick peek. And you'll understand why I sort of quite, I would like the idea I do like the idea, what am I talking about, of, um, of living there. Because the, the landscape is so dramatic. Excuse me, fiddling around, trying to find another, another tube of this, which I now have. Um, yeah, the Pyrenees, incredible place, absolutely incredible. Takes your breath away. The only, the only downside, although maybe it isn't a downside, the only, the only, wherever I go to live in France, you see, I have to rent. I, don't, I haven't bought any property here. And um, finding a good rental that A, one can afford, um, and also that isn't ugly. I mean, the landscape there may, may be incredible, but... Well, I don't want to live in a house that's um, ugly. <laughs> My goodness, I want so much, don't I? But um, it would be a very interesting place for people to come and learn to paint because the whole place is inspiring. And I guess if I did that, anyway, the point I was getting at is this is what it's like where I live now. In the Pyrenees, it's like, you know, big humpy mountains. So, um, I don't know, who knows? You never know what your life is going to throw at you. Okay, so I've added I've added brown to this because um, I want it to be authentic, you know. And the colour just wasn't authentic. There are some little bits in this that are sort of quite interesting. Um, way too small for you to see. You'll see it at the end, but um, maybe you can see it. The, these accidental fit marks that you get. Uh, on, in paint, that you know the eye starts to rationalise. Anyway, I think I'm out of the way quite well. Oh, good. So I'm going to anyway. I'm going to start pulling this up into the sky so that it mixes with the sky colour and produce some distant effects. Totally accidental, but they look like they should be there. They look like, uh, in fact, I, I'm starting to think of them. Um, I, I like to invent words. Okay, so I, I'm going to call them scape marks. So they're marks in the landscape. A mark in the landscape is a scape mark. Now that's sort of interesting there. You see the paint, the dark is mixed with the light. And that's what it's produced. So if it looks good, I'm not going to change it. That's the thing. Know when to stop. What it's actually done, it's added perspective without even trying. Whatever that is, it's either a bunch of trees or a hill, but it's disappearing into the distance. So I can make that look even more, uh, I suppose, what's the word? more dramatic by just sort of adding a little bit of dark 
to this thing. Now it's a thing at the moment, you see, until it starts to look like something that isn't thing-like. I'll keep calling it a thing. But I think it's trees at the moment. Trees, trees are at the top of the list. Okay, so green and brown, you see? Magical stuff. Let's put in some marks like so. Now, by doing that, you see, what have I got there? What have I got the beginning of? I've either got the beginning of snow or I've got the beginning of water laying on agricultural land. So let's get a bit more, um, what should we get? Quick look at, yep. And I think a bit more brown in there. I might go for mud. Quite like mud. Nothing wrong with it. I used to play with it when I was a kid. Never, never actually tasted it, but uh, and I, I think I'm glad to say I hope I never do. But anyway, it sort of could be water. Maybe it's water. A little bit more brown. I think. Where should we put it? Let's have. Let's just get a load of brownish stuff down here, and then just gradually let the paint. Um, thin out from the brush as it approaches the other colours there. See the textures all start to work. Um, um, the effect is if I put solid colour here and then gradually feather it away, this becomes closer than that because it's darker. It's worth remembering. So I'm going to put a little tiny bit of Payne's Grey into the mix. Just to make that a little bit more obvious, just down the bottom edge there. Just a touch. Okay, so we've got perspective without really even um, breaking sweat. Okay, so let's, let's see where that's going. Okay, that line there, I quite like this line. I might put something on it to stop it from leading you off the picture, but it's sort of going the right way. Uh, it's not difficult to do, you just literally put in a bush or something. Just something like that. And that, hopefully, keeps interest uh, in the picture. The reason I'm pausing is because I think my cat is trying to break into the room. And uh, the longer I leave it, the more violent the scenario could become. Okay, so um, let's see, I'm gonna do something with these trees now. And also, you see, I don't, I don't like repeat shapes. These, some of these shapes are a little bit too repetitive. So I might extend that one along a bit and put a bit more green in it. The thing is, you see, woods like this from a distance, particularly in a, land, in a tonalist landscape, um, they sort of lose their green, funnily enough, unless they've got really bright sunlight hitting them. They become sort of brown, bluey uh, tones the beauty of tonalism. Okay, so I've got, I've got more paint here. I'm going to push quite some, some quite strong green into that. And just see what interesting things. Hope I'm out of the way. You'd tell me if I wasn't, wouldn't you? There we go. So there's some interesting shapes. Just there, it's sort of semi-abstract, I suppose. They're just um, they're just shapes. And let's do a little bit on that now. So the brush, you see, it's got it's got green on it, and uh, the tip has got the blue from the sky. Don't necessarily want that uh, every time, so you can just take that off. Do not need to dip this in solvent. Just pull the paint off, and then you got back to a nice dark brush. So um, 
the colour for the bush and the shape of the bush over there. Let's see if we can do this again without getting in the way. Okay, sort of. Um, let's uh, take that up just a bit and then gradually away and then pull something across there. There we are. An instant whatever it is. It's an instant thing on the horizon. Okay, so let me think. Okay, so this, this is giving the appearance of water maybe lying on the ground. I think that's probably what I'm going to go for, because, I mean, you've seen the clouds. It must have rained recently, so let's not go around tidying up too much. Um, let's just leave these as they are, I think. Yeah, I think for now. So back to the sky. Quick hand wipe, and I'll be with you. Right, so there we are. Well, well I'll give you a um, close-up of everything uh, a little later. But at the moment, um, let's, let's keep it a general sort of overview. So what I'm going to do now, um, I've got a pallet knife. In fact, I've got a whole pile of pallet knives. And I'm just going to grab some white that has no other colour in it completely clean and I'm not adding oil okay it's very important the white at this stage when I put on the clouds I don't add oil there's enough oil on there um, so uh, hopefully this will just sit on the top so what I'm going to look, now, look for now is what's going on where's the light coming from well the light's possibly behind us coming down across that way so I'm going to um, only add white to the sort of left sides of the clouds. So let's have a little bit coming down through there, a little bit on there, a little bit down here. Just a, just a little touch. And every time you go to get more paint, wipe your palette knife. Because if you pick up blue or something which I would have picked up blue and grey which I would have picked up by touching that um, then you won't have the cleanliness and sparkle that you that you want Let's have another bit there see the palette knife is starting to get a bit contaminated now it's starting to go blue if you can see that don't know whether you can it's got a slight blue tinge to it anyway Okay, so let's see. Let's have um, a little something there. Now, the reason I'm putting it there is because it's right next to a nice dark grey bit. It's not awfully dark. I mean, it's you know, slightly dark. And I, I, I can add much more drama to this sky uh, later when it's dry um, by using glazes. In other words, oil and paint but tends to be on the... Uh, more oil and paint side of things and uh, if you look on my YouTube you'll see uh, there's a few um, videos showing glazing if I can uh, find them again I'll um, put some links in the info box under the video all right so don't forget every time I go and get more white I'm cleaning the palette knife I'm not going to overdo this, keep it uh, quite minimalistic. What do I do with my brush? There it is. I always say that, it's like I'm asking you where my brush is. You don't know where my brush is. And if I don't know, how would you know? Okay, so I'm going to swoop over that a bit. So that the bits that I just put on will maintain their brightness. Notice again, I'm turning it like that each time. I don't always do that, but
but um, I usually save that for Wednesdays, and I think today might be Wednesday, so that's why I'm doing it. It does actually help to um, keep the brush, you know, reasonably fresh. Great big hair right there. So uh, I think that may be it for this one. So I will be doing this again uh, on the fourth. Let me just check my wall. Um, yeah, the fourteenth, Saturday the fourteenth. Um, today being the um, fifth. So yeah, I'll be doing this again on a Zoom lesson. And the reason I've done this here is that um, it's better quality, as I said, I think I said, you know, it's so long ago, an hour maybe, um, that um, Zoom has a way with images. In other words, it mashes them up. And at least this video will give you an idea of uh, the actual colours and the actual quality of the painting. Um, but if you want to see me paint live and chat, Zoom is the place to go. And uh, the link will be below. There will also be a link on um, Facebook. If you go to my Facebook page, there will be a link to the next lesson. And yeah, it's good fun as usual. An hour of painting, half an hour technically half an hour, although sometimes many hours of chatting afterwards. Um, yeah, so if you want to do that, please book. It's filling up quite quickly. Um, I think at the moment there's a possibly, a, oh, I could guess, but I think it's about 15 or 16 people. Um, there is space for 50 people um, if you want to come. And uh, it's a, a nice bunch, all very relaxed. You can paint along or you can just watch uh, and then at the end show me your painting and we'll do a little critique. Um, although it's not always, a, as, as these classes go on, um, it's not so much of a critique, funny enough, it's more of just a chat and telling people how well they've done because uh, it's interesting to watch from my perspective how people have um, improved over the last um, last year or so. In fact, I'm very tempted here to put in a little bit more, a little bit more of a something there, a, a flying something in the sky. So uh, let's just work on that a little bit more too. Let's have a bit more there and a bit more just there. There we go. All right. So we'll soften that down. So there we are. I hope you've um, hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something. That's why I make them. And uh, uh, what else? I have a Patreon page if you are interested in supporting me. Um, what else? If you become a patron of a certain level, you get free access to the uh, to the Zoom classes. And uh, I have to say, Patreon is not an easy page to manage. I get on there when I can. Uh, sorry, I just had to put this here. I get on there when I can, um, but they don't make it easy. It's quite complex. And uh, well, that's sort of interesting. Isn't it? OK, right, I'm stopping there. Uh, yeah. Back to what I was trying to concentrate on earlier. I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, I certainly have, I have to say. This is really good therapy. Painting is good for you. Takes you to another world. And uh, you can just sort of forget all your worries. Slap paint on. And if it goes wrong, it doesn't matter. Unslap it and uh, start again. So thanks for being here. And bye for now. Oh, and please subscribe. Thank you. Bye.